One is square and one is long. Rectangular. Rectangular. Right. Yeah. See how smart we are? I mean, we really bring this new light to questions like this. Um, here's one that's not so easy. Hi, I'm Ted Cook, and this is my brother Jason. We uh, have been rooked into doing the podcast and answering a lot of your questions. Uh, our marketing people have put together a list of questions, and uh, we're going to do our best to answer them. What do you think? Yeah, we've got some new questions this week. I think uh, good questions, and hopefully it'll help everybody out there. A couple of them aren't good questions. A couple, couple of them are done But right you done. made them. So. But, uh, then I should answer them probably. Yeah. Okay, first question. What is the best flooring to put on an uneven floor? Uh, there's not a best floor to put on an uneven floor. I think you should do the best to level your floor before you put anything over the top of it. In our, in our last podcast, we talked a little bit about that, about how uh, given the choice, we would always choose to nail the floor. If we can't nail it, we glue it. If we can't glue it, we will float it. And, and that, I guess that would be one of the scenarios when you right. have a floor that just has a little unevenness to it. If, if we tried to glue it down, maybe there's not enough glue touching the wood to get the adhesion we need, then you know you can float it. But as we said before, you're going to get a hollow sound under that because of that dead space. You're, you're much better off fixing it. You can put maybe a luon over it and stapling it down just to, to give it a little bit more stability. Shingles work good. Shingles, we have shingles. Shingles work good because they'll never compress and they'll always stay the same. Well, you're talking about just laying the shingle in the low spot. I've yep. heard about people using sand, but that's bad no. to move around. But you know, if you just want to put a shingle in a low spot, that'll help. All right, um, why is my bedroom floor sloping? Probably because you're fat like me. You know, there's too much weight on one side. Yeah, the only thing that would make a bedroom slope is one of your outside walls has settled. So we don't, we don't sell anything that's going to help with that? No. Um, best thing to do there is find you a local carpenter and see what he can do for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And put the bed we on the wall. We ain't builders. We're floor lower, people. We are we? floor people. Yeah. At, at best. Yeah. All right. Uh, what, here's an easy one, I'll do it. What's okay. the difference between luxury vinyl tile and luxury vinyl plank? Oh yeah, this one's easy, I see why. One's a tile, one's a plank. Would you like to expound on that, brother? One is square and one is long. Rectangular. Rectangular. Right, yeah. See how smart we are? I mean, we really bring this new light to questions like this. Um, here's one that's not so easy. Is luxury vinyl plank better than laminate? That's the first part of the question. First off, we're never going to tell you something's better than something else. It depends so much on the application. What are you putting it in? You know, uh, laminates have come a long way in the last few years, a really long way. Uh, some of them are waterproof, just like LVP. Uh, they, they do cost more. I'm, I'm a pretty cheap guy. I, I don't like to spend more for anything. So it's hard to say that there is an application that laminate's better than, than an LVP. Thoughts? Uh, I'll disagree with you a little bit on that well. one. Um, I think vinyl plank is better than laminate because of the waterproof factor. Some of your laminates are water resistant. I don't think they are waterproof. Um, most, a lot of people have pets in their home. True, eight out of 10. I don't know the actual Your dog goes and pees in the corner and you don't see it or don't know it. Later you what does it, it do to laminate? If it, it gets it down in, it, up it'll bubble up. and swell up or with vinyl plank, it'll never do that. Well, part B of the question is what can I tell my wife for her to believe it? Would you make something up or? No, that's what I would tell her. It's just have just, her watch your video. Have her watch my video wife. and say this is the reason I think we should go with LVP over a laminate floor. And LVP, in all honesty, is the closest thing to an indestructible floor that, that we've ever sold. It's, um, you know, your, your SPC floors, if you'll buy a 20 mil floor, it's not going to dent, it's almost impossible to scratch, water isn't going to hurt it, and it's cheap. That, that makes it the best floor. Okay, um, here's another good question. Is engineered flooring durable, and how long do engineered floors last? This is a trick question, right? Uh, I think it is, but assume that <clears throat> yes. the gentleman that asked that question wanted some information and you're going to provide that. Yep. 
Engineered flooring is durable. Um, a lot of them have the aluminum oxide finish just like any solid would do. They have the same finishes no matter whether it's engineered, solid, whatever. Um, how long do engineered floors last? Um, it's a hard question to answer because every yeah. household is different, you know. Yeah. Um, a retired couple, you know, in their 60s, it's only them and no grandkids. They're never going to see a change in it. Yeah. The same, another set of grandparents that's got 20 grandkids that come over every weekend, they're going to see a little wear on it. It's just a really hard question. What do you think? Yeah, when, you, when we talk about durability in a floor, what are we really talking about? In, in on, all honesty, the differences between engineered and solid floors are not about the durability. They both have wood top, they both have aluminum oxide. Some of your higher end engineered floors are made in a way that makes them really hard. They alternate the, the layers, they put a lot of layers, big thick floors, so it makes them really dense. Uh, but when you compare that to a solid hickory, is there an engineered floor that will dent less than a solid hickory? No, there's not one. But if we're just, we're answering the question as it was asked, is it, a, you know, which one's more durable? The durability is the same. The big difference between engineered and solid is stability, okay? If we have a house maybe that has a propensity to have moisture issues, don't put a solid in there because that solid's going to expand and it's going to cut. An engineered won't. So the, the difference in applications is not about durability, it's about finding the right product for the right application. Yes. How long does an engineered floor last? Uh, we, we talked about this in, a, in an earlier blog. Really, the lifetime of a floor is determined by its change in appearance over time, usually by a loss of gloss level. You know, if over here where you walk, you see a change in sheen because of that change in gloss level, that abrasive wear, you, you see that as opposed to over here in front of the fireplace where it looks like the day it was installed because nobody ever walks over there. So, you know, how is that apple? It's the same whether it's solid or engineered. Again, you, you've got aluminum oxide, we've got tough finishes, the, the floors they made 30 years ago, you had to refinish every five years because of scratches. You don't refinish floors no. anymore. They're, the, these finishes of today are, are just really, really tough, and we're, we're fortunate to have them. Anything you want to add? Or no, I think, I think enough? that's plenty. You think I need to shut up? Yeah. Okay, good talk. Here's you one. All right. What are the best brands of engineered flooring? That is the easiest question on here. We were laughing a minute ago. We asked them to give us some true-false <laughs> questions so we wouldn't have to think, but this is even easier. Um, and while some people might disagree with me, I hate it because I, I want everybody to agree with me because I want them to be right. That's a pretty good line, isn't it? Feel free to use that. Uh, Somerset Hardwood Flooring out of Somerset, Kentucky makes absolutely the best engineered floor in the United States, okay? I'm gonna tell you how they do it. And you, of course, we don't consider the ones coming from China even in the ballpark. But let me tell you why. What it takes to make a really good engineered floor um, it takes multi plies. More plies, the better. Because we, you know, engineered flooring is about stability. That's why we bought an engineered floor, is for stability. Whether it's because we want an 80 inch board and we can't get that in a solid, or, or because we have a wet application. Stability is the name of the game, right? The more plies you have, alternating the directions of those plies, the more stability we get. Something else that, that has a big bearing on the quality of that floor is what are those plies made out of? We can make those plies out of pine and we're going to have a really soft core, okay? The harder material we use, the harder that core is going to be. And, and what that means to you is when you drop a, a bowling ball or a pot or something on your floor, how big a dent is it going to make? It's going to make a dent. Well, if you're using a hardwood core like Somerset does, you're going to see a minimal amount of, of depression left. Um, thickness is an issue. Uh, all the summer sets are half inch thick. You can buy, there's a few floors out there that are a little bit thicker, but most of them they're doing it for show. They'll use five plies and make it nine sixteenths. The plies are much more important than the, than the thickness. Also the, the, the veneer on top, you know, how thick is that? That's not a real big deal. You'd like to have one an eighth of an inch, but any thicker than that really is just for show. So uh, to go again, engineered, or uh, summer sets engineers all are eight ply, hardwood core, um, made in the United States, made over in uh, Crossville, Tennessee, actually, pretty close to here. Um, aluminum oxide wear layer. And then I, I forgot about the, one of the most important things they do. 
Some people don't like engineered compared to solid. They say it looks cheap. The reason for that is most engineers, when they make them, they use a rotary peel. I don't have uh, any graphics, but I'm sure they'll add some here when they get this video done. To do a rotary peel, if you were looking at the cross section of a piece of wood, they cut around it, okay? What that does is it makes a higher yield. You get more square footage of engineered that can be used. The downside is that's not the way wood's usually cut, so it gives it a different look. When they cut a solid piece of wood, they're cutting it across or face on, okay? So you're always seeing uh, a different look in your in your surface. You know, you get some quarter sawn, some flat sawn. Um, when Somerset makes their engineered floors, when they when they cut their engineered uh, veneer, they actually cut it just like they do their solids. It's cut the exact same way. So when you get it installed, it looks the exact same way. Um, real solid, I think is what they call it, or something like that. I can't remember what, I should know, but I wasn't prepared for that. Uh, it's, it's a great system for making a high quality floor that looks good and you can still buy it for under under six dollars a square foot made in the U.S. You've laid a lot of it. What's your thoughts? Oh, it's a good laying floor. It's a good product. It stalls easy. You know, your alternative is, is some of the three-eighths floors that you can get from a box store. Uh, why would somebody make a three-eighths over half inch? Because it's cheaper to make. Okay, they, they're wanting to sell it to a, a customer that's looking for for something a little less expensive. Well, the neat thing about this is, this, this product, we have uh, Somerset's cabin grade in that. So when, you, uh, when you're comparing, you can go out and buy a $2.50 3 8 floor at Home Depot or Lowe's, or you can buy our half inch thick, eight ply, face sawn engineered in a cabin grade with a little shorter board length, more color for under buck 50. So if you really want to talk about value, get the higher quality construction, take the shorter boards. Surely I've said enough about That's that. That's plenty. That's plenty, right? Yeah. Okay, um, all right, Mr. Smarty Pants Floor Installer, what direction should engineered flooring be installed? Face up? Face up face usually up? Yeah. works best. Uh -huh. And face up and opposite of floor joists. Floor joists are those boards in there. Floor the joists are, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the reason you want to do opposite floor joists, it gives you a stronger floor and you get less apt to get any dipping in between your joists. Because if you're going to see any movement of joists, it's going to be a crown or a low yes. spot. So running the other direction minimizes, minimizes it. Minimizes it, yes. Okay, it can still happen. It but can happen, but not, not as bad. Uh -huh. Okay, well that was That's pretty simple. pretty easy. That's the yeah. true fault. Too. That's really why I gave you that question, because yeah. it's so simple. All right, um, this one, how do you stagger around engineered flooring? How do you, sta how do you how stagger? Do you stagger My engineered bad. flooring. How do you stagger engineered flooring? Uh, you just want to get your end joints as far apart as possible. Um, you know, it's according to the grade you get too. You know, cabin grade, you're going to get shorter boards so you can't spread your end joints out as much as you could but in the first quality. Than, you know, but you price. pay a lot less money. Yeah. You know, you don't want them lined up with each other an inch apart, you know, with, you know, three inches on the, you know, at least is what I would try to do if I was doing a cabin grade. You can get, um, Wider apart than that if you're using the first. Our goal usually is six inches. Yeah, your goal is six, but you can't always right. do that. As long as your boards are 12 inches yes. long, you can always go six yeah. inches. Um, yeah. But All you right. can't always get that. Right. Not always. And, and the reason for that is, again, stability. Yes. Okay, we're talking about engineer flooring. It's all about stability. And the closer those end joints are to each other, the more likely it is for it to move if, if your floor moves. Okay, here's here's a really easy one, so I'll, I'll let you answer. It says, what are H joints and why are they bad? My neighbor likes giving me advice, but this is the first time I think I didn't know what he was talking about. H joints, you don't hear that term often. You hear more stair step pattern. Mm -hmm. Stair steps is when it join every two inches and it goes for 20 boards up there and it looks ridiculous. An H joint, um, what do you think of an H joint? Well, I, the, the H joints I've seen have been, you know, one single H. And what we're talking about is uh, when you're laying a floor and you start stagging your joints, if your joint, it really, it doesn't matter if it's an H or a stair step. If your joints are predictable, then your company come over and look at it and say, why is that so predictable in your floor? It's, it's always caused by one of two things. Either an installer that could, was going as far as he could reach and he didn't want to move to complete it and didn't take the time to work it around, 
or because they bought Chinese wood. All of the Chinese wood comes in set sizes. It's crazy as it sounds. Um, all the solids, they have three sizes in the box. So when, you, when you're using those three sizes, it has a propensity to get really predictable. And you may not even notice it when you're laying it, but when you get done, you look back and think, man, I've got every third joint is in a line. And that's just because of the size of the board. You know, everything that we sell is random length, so it's really not an issue, but it's up to whoever's installing it to look and say, okay, I just had a joint here two boards ago. I need to make sure that I'm moving this. Don't get predictable with it. And I think if you do one row at a time and finish that row, yeah. instead of trying to take 10 boards to the saw at once, That's right. I think you won't run into that problem. Right. Yeah, I, I guess the secret is have you a cut guy, okay? Yeah. Whether it's your wife, your son, your daughter, your uh, great uncle, it doesn't matter. If you're the guy that's doing the nailing, stay on the machine and let somebody else do the cutting. Man, that, that yep. is much more efficient. When we worked together, I was always the cut man because, you know, those cuts have to be done really good and it took my my um, attention to detail. Wouldn't you say that was why? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Here's okay. another one. What? The vinyl floors look cheap. The, the display images for LVP look good, but do they look better than the rollout vinyl? All right, this is one of those opinion questions. Uh, I don't like opinion questions. I like for everybody to have their own opinion. I like for you to form that opinion based on the information that we give you. Um, that's why they make different products. That's why they make different products, that's yeah. right. We, we can tell you the facts about stuff, but really the opinion's up to you. Um, LVP floors, one advantage they have is the texture. They have, you know, some of the floors have painted bevels. Uh, some of them have uh, a texture that is engineered to match the visual in the floor. They call it what the uh, um, enhanced uh, what it, registered embossed. Registered embossed. Registered embossed. Embossed. Pretty neat stuff. When you see a knot, you can feel a knot. So what they can do with an, with an LVP floor allows it to look better than your typical vinyl floors. That being said, there are some really good looking roll, roll goods out there. I, I don't have a problem with roll goods. Frankly, uh, the, the biggest problem with, with roll goods is the installation. It's a beast to install. Yeah, by the time you do your semen, your floor prep, because because vinyl roll vinyl is glued to the floor and because it's thin compared to an LVP, um, it's going to mirror whatever's underneath it. So if you have a crack in the floor, it's gonna look like you have a crack in your vinyl. Um, that, that's the problem. It's, it's insulation, as he said. It's and tears insulation. easier. It, ta it does tear. tear more easily. Moving refrigerator stoves. Yeah. yeah. Um, L and when you, if you tear one piece, you got to replace yeah. it all. With, with LVP, one, it's a lot harder. Uh, material costs aren't much more than a, than a, a good vinyl. No. And because you can lay it yourself, your, your labor costs are nil. So honestly, your total job will be about the same. Another downside to vinyl is the waste. You have to buy vinyl that's 12 or 13 feet wide. If your room's only eight foot wide, it doesn't matter. You still have to buy that full width and you throw it out. And if you're paying somebody to install it, you pay labor on what they yep. threw out. They get paid for what they carry in, okay? So um, I'm a big fan of that big number down at the bottom. If you want to compare the cost of roll goods and LVP, get a price. You look at the big number down at the bottom and see what the difference is. But as far as a visual, yeah, um, LVPs are gonna look better. Oh yeah. All right, does LVP flooring scratch easily? Go ahead. No? False? <laughs> False. Uh, no, it doesn't. But it, again, you're going with an opinion. How about we reword that to say, does LVP flooring scratch more easily than a hardwood floor? No. And that why? It's just harder. When we talk about scratches, some and people ref are referring to real fine scratches in the surface, where others are talking about maybe where you've drug a piece of furniture, and that's actually a gouge, okay? You've gotten into the density of the wood, it's and you've dented the wood, a groove in it, okay? LVP floors, now, now you're gonna get into SPC versus WPC. Nah. SPC floors, uh, the newer ones, stone polymer core, they're almost impossible to dent. Could it be done? I guess it could, but you're not going to do it through normal household no. use. Nothing scratch proof. Right. Um, your cheaper ones, are they going to show more? Your little six mils and four mils that yeah. some of these box stores sell, yes. 
uh, versus and, a 20 mil. And you touched on a good point. It's about showing. Yeah. Okay? It really doesn't matter if it dents. Can you see it? So when you're looking at some of these floors that have more texture, they're going to show, show less. Right, they're going to show less scratch, less indentation. Um, you get a smooth, dark. It might show you know, more. It might show. It's Especially going to, if you have directional definitely light. Definitely will show more, yes. The directional light, you'll see more of that. Uh, let's see. Can you put heavy furniture on vinyl paint for it? Well, we just sort of covered that. Yeah. Yeah. Buy an SPC and don't move SPC, it around. WPC might, after time, something real yeah. heavy, put a small indention, but SPCs won't. All right, what's the most scratch resistant solid hardwood floor? Okay. Scratch resistance versus denting. Um, this is this is not a short answer, okay? Because we, if, we're not here to knock out 25 questions and go home and or go in somebody's case go golfing. Yeah. But uh, we priorities. Really do want to, don't 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 interrupt anymore. Priorities. Yeah. We we really want to give you information that makes sense. So sometimes a question will get asked that we know we need to expand on. Okay. What is the most scratch resistant solid hardwood floor? All right, there is a test called the Janka test that determines what the density is of different species of wood. Uh, the results of the test uh, tell us how many foot-pounds of pressure it takes to drive a 44 caliber steel ball half its thickness into wood. Granted, we're not going to drive a 44 caliber steel ball into your floor, but it does give us a way of comparing them. So a pine floor is softer than a maple floor. A maple floor is softer than an oak floor. An oak floor is softer than a hickory floor. How do we know that? We go look at the Janka score. So, you know, is that scratches? No, that's denting. Uh, when you look at some of the inexpensive, what they call maple floors that are imported from China, you'll see they dent really, really badly. One, that's because they're not maple floor. They're actually a Siberian larch that has a really low Janka score. So it dents easily. You're going to get that. It's not scratches so much. The aluminum oxide on the top keeps it from scratching, but it dents up badly. Um, scratch resistance, again, they're, they're all finished with aluminum oxide, almost every floor on the market. There's a few oil floors out there, maybe a wax one or two left around, but almost all are aluminum oxide and they're really difficult to scratch. It's the gouging that gets yep. you. All right, next question. Where are we at? Which is more expensive, engineered or solid hardwood? Engineered is more, more, usually more expensive. Um, depends on what width you're at and what species. Uh, engineered takes more work to make. Solid is um, it's a solid piece of wood, so there's not as many steps. Um, and grade. Grade certainly has a big impact yeah. on it. Yeah, the higher the grade, the more money it costs. Uh, if that's the neat thing. We sell a tremendous amount of cabin grade flooring. And what's neat about flooring is it's graded after it's made, okay? So they don't say, hey, we're making cabin today. Let's go with five plies instead of eight. Or let's cut down on the aluminum oxide. It doesn't work that way, okay? It's all cut from the same trees. It's all kilned in the same kiln. It's all milled on the same mill. It's made on the same line. And then it's finished on the same line. And then they look at it and say, hey, this board has a, a, a small knot in it. This board has a, a colored streak in it. This a worm hole. A wormhole. It goes into cabin. And when it goes to cabin, it, it knocks like 70% off the price of that board. So we're, we happen to be really excited about our cabin grade and builder grade offerings, but there's a place for the first quality as well. I'm getting ready to build a house and I'm, I'm gonna use some first quality that we bought a deal on. It's some that rift and quartered. Man, it's gonna look good in there. Um, what's the most popular width of hardwood flooring? Jason? Mm. Uh, the most popular widths would be, we sell more three and a quarter width than anything. Fours and fives are very popular. In solids you're talking in about. In solids. Mm -hmm. um, when you get up into the fives in solids, you are more apt to see a cupping issue, which I think we've covered in another video. What you covered again there? Covered it again. Answer. Cupping is if you get a little too much moisture in your home, um, it causes the boards to swell and you'll get the little rippling effect if you don't keep your house a certain temperature year round. People that, if you have a summer home and you'd like to turn everything off in the winter time or, or when you leave in the summer, you should never use a five inch board. Right. 
You, yeah, if you're in that case, you should use engineered anyway. In engineered, exactly you right. can use a wider board, mm -hmm. and you're much less apt to have that problem. Right, solid woods are much more susceptible to moisture changes. Um, the wider they are, exponentially more susceptible. When you, uh, if you're one of those folks that likes to open the doors and windows in the spring and let the wind blow through, don't buy a solid. No, Not you. Your floor's gonna cut. Uh, cup, I, I've probably seen a thousand cup floors in my life. And uh, everybody wants to blame the installer or blame the manufacturer or blame whoever. The, the fact is, if, if a floor cup sector has been installed more than a month, it's your fault, okay? Turn your air conditioner on, close the doors and windows. It's only caused by change in moisture. That's the only thing that causes cupping. So, um, you know, stay away from wide solids if you like. Stay away from solid completely, but definitely don't go wider than three and a quarter if you have any moisture issues. Yeah. All right. Um, what is the best wood flooring if you have pets? LVP. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fake wood flooring. That's the best. Uh, um, the best if you have pets. I mean, it ain't, uh, it's, you know, pet size is a big thing with this too. If I've, yeah. you know, if I've got a little chihuahua, it ain't going to scratch really nothing. Whether it's solid, engineered, you know, it ain't, it ain't going to do it. If I've got a German Shepherd in there, we know what it's going to do to a wood floor. To a softer wood floor. I mean, yeah. you know, a truly hard, hard wood floor is going to be better ones. It's yeah. not going to affect that. But yeah, there's enough issue there. Yeah. Um, it's not just pet accidents. It can be their nails. Yeah. Uh, I've got a, um, what, what do I have? <laughs> Some kind of bulldog. English bulldog. And uh, sometimes he'll show a little sign of, energy and he'll take off and, and yeah. those long nails he can scratch the floor up. Yeah. So the best wood flooring, the fake wood flooring, yes. LVP. Yes. Can you tell the difference between hardwood and engineered hardwood? All right, I'll, I'm gonna take that one, Jason. This is one of those issues I feel pretty strongly about. Um, when we talk about, I, I assume you mean, can you tell the difference between solid hardwood and engineered hardwood? It goes back to how they made it. About, I'm gonna say 90% of all engineered floors that are made are made using um, a rotary peel veneer, okay? They cut around the log to get a higher yield. And all of your, your um, solid woods are face on. They're cut across the face of a board. Sometimes they'll roll a board or, over, but, or a, a log over and saw it, but that's just for yield. They'll always cut across the face. Um, almost always. There's some rift and quartered ways that you cut at an angle, but as a general rule, all solids are cut across the face. Um, our supplier, the company that supplies most of our engineered flooring is Somerset Flooring, and all of their engineered veneers are face sewn just like a solid. You cannot tell the difference when they're installed of our engineered versus our solid. Now you'll hear people, I can tell the difference. No, you can't. All right, you, you can't because there is no difference. You're looking at two dimensions, they're the same. They're the exact same floor. Um, maybe you, if you want to go pull up a vent, you can look at a vent and yeah. tell. But, but that's the only way. That's the only way to tell. Again, now most 90% of floors are, are a rotary peel. That gets the price down and they're usually 3 8 inch thick floors. They're usually five plies or three plies. When, you know, making a floor the cheapest is a slippery slope. Once you decide you want to be the cheapest, They'll give up anything, and that's why we love selling the best. There is not a better engineered floor than a Somerset engineered floor, okay? Eight plies, half inch thick, uh, face sawn. It's, it's an awesome floor. So uh, that's my thoughts on telling the difference. What do you think? Yeah, I don't. When they're installed, I don't think you can tell the difference. All right, next question. Do wide wood floors make a room look bigger? Uh, no. I, in my opinion, no. Um, some cases, you know, if I got a small room and I put a wide plank in it, I think it could make it look smaller. Now, right. if I have a huge, you know, just great room right. and everything is open, um, I think it could. I think you don't need to bring questions like that to us. If you've got an opinion on it, yeah. use your opinion and leave ours alone. All right, listen, uh, he's got to go golfing and um, I, I need a dot Mountain Dew, so we're going to finish up for today. If you have any questions, we'd, we'd love for you to send them in to us and let us answer them. You might even get an honest, sincere answer. Might not. Yeah, you never you know. It's okay. according to what day it is. That's right. Yeah. Thanks.